Okay. Hello again, aficionados. So I have had some technical difficulties trying to record this video. So, but I am going to get it done. I'm, I'm you know, nothing's going to stop me. Okay. So, anyways, um, wanted to do a video about a common challenge that I see with newer users or inexperienced users. And that is that, you know, the user loads up the sample and loads an appropriate alignment file, maybe loads an appropriate FEG register, and then goes to open up the column valves. And there's nothing there, okay? So there's no beam, there's no intensity, there's no image. So, you know, why is that, okay? And to be clear, th this problem basically affects everybody, okay? This isn't limited just to um, new or inexperienced users, but you know, newer inexperienced users tend to have more of a of an issue with dealing with this, right? Because they just you know haven't come across this very much, right? They they see this and they think there's something like wrong with the microscope. Well, th there's probably nothing wrong with the microscope, um, as we're going to see here. Okay. So, anyways, um, the issue is you don't have a beam, right? So, what do you need to do? Okay. So, there's really thankfully a pretty short list of reasons as to why you are not seeing anything on your screen right now, okay? So um, the most obvious reason is you have something that is non-transmissive to the beam that is in the beam path, okay? So obviously we're, we're using an Omniprobe grid here. So if we're over part of the grid, you know, that's 30 microns thick of molybdenum. Well, we're obviously not gonna be able to transmit through that, okay? If you're working with a support film grid, it's going to be the same thing if you're over part of the thick uh, copper, right? Which is again, you know, several tens of micrometers thick. Okay, we're not going to be able to to transmit through that. So if that's where we are over right now, then clearly we're not going to see anything. Okay, so so that's explanation one. Um, explanation two is, what if we're we're over open area, okay, or at least over something that is transmissive. But let's say the beam has just been spread out really, really far, okay? Like you can see right now, we're not reading any screen current and this can happen depending on how far the beam gets spread, okay? So that could be a reason why, okay? And then the third reason why is, what if the beam is simply, there's nothing in the way, okay? The beam's not spread out too much, but what if the beam has simply been deflected too far off of the center, okay? Well, obviously we're not gonna see anything that way either, okay? So there's really three possible reasons as to why we're not seeing anything, okay? And of course, it is entirely possible that more than one of those factors can be at play at any given time, okay? Uh, the good news is that the way to deal with any of those situations is exactly the same, okay? And that is, we just decrease our magnification until we see something, okay? So right now we're in SA mode at a fairly low mag, and we're gonna keep going down in SA mode. And because this is a themis, there's no M mode. So we go straight from SA to LM. Okay. And we're gonna keep decreasing the mag. Oh, okay. And now we're seeing something, okay. So once you start to see something, you can then use your beam manipulation tools. So the trackball, okay, um, or your intensity knob to see if you can actually manipulate the beam, okay? And so what we can see here, I'm gonna keep decreasing the mag, is that yes, indeed, we were over, um, or we had in the beam path, the grid, right? So that's why we weren't seeing anything, okay? Until we mag down and we spread the beam out far enough, okay? So I'm gonna go over here because I know where the lamella is. It's right here in the notch of the, whoops, come on, of the one dot post. Come on. So in our case, we didn't have a problem with the beam being spread out too much or, or shifted too far away from center. Our problem was that there was something non-transmissive in the way, okay? So very quickly, I'm gonna set you centric height here.
All right. Centric's good. So right now, obviously, we don't have anything that is non-transmissive in the beam path. But, okay, and I moved this out of the way, so we're over vacuum here, okay? <clears throat> so well, let's just say for the sake of argument here, let me go back into SA or in SA mode, okay? So now you can see if I spread the beam out too far, So even right now, even with nothing in the way, I'm, I'm still seeing something, okay? I'm still reading some amount of current, okay? So, you know, this is not really probably the most likely situation that the beam is spread out too far. Um, but again, right, you can just play around with the intensity knob. Like if you're, you're seeing something here, you're seeing something on the screen monitor, okay? That's why you have the screen monitor to help with situations like this. So if you're turning the knob and your current is going up, you're going in the right direction, okay, towards getting the beam to be within the viewable area, right? So our current's going up, still going up, and we found the beam, okay? All right, and we can see that the beam is is well centered, okay? And now again, <clears throat> I, I I already did this beforehand. I already set the alignment file beforehand, so that includes the default beam position, okay? So you do have a default beam position for both um, SA mode as well as um, LM mode, okay? But let's say for the sake of argument that somehow, you know, you accidentally, right? You know, you, you panicked and you didn't know what you were doing and somehow you accidentally shifted the beam way off of center, okay? So one of the things you can do um, before you, resort to uh, decreasing the mag, okay, is you can go to direct alignments and find where it says beam shift and click that, okay? So that recalls the uh, stored position for uh, default position for the beam, okay? Uh, and then from here, we can actually fine tune this a little bit and then save it, okay? So actually I'm gonna shift this off kilter here pretty badly again, okay? So now the, this beam shift, this is unique to the SA mode, okay? So if I go down into LM, okay, we should be able to still see it in LM mode because it was centered, yes. Yeah, so the beam shift has a different setting in LM mode than it does in M mode or in SA mode, okay? So again, I can do the same thing here, right? I can, you know, oops, I accidentally shifted it way too far off center. I click beam shift and that that brings it right back, okay? Um, now, if you accidentally, now again, once you have this selected, you are now, you can store this however you want, okay? So if you're not careful and you store it off of center like this, okay, it's gonna go back there when you click beam shift, okay? So you have to be careful. Now, again, if, if you get really lost, what I would suggest is go back and reload the alignment file, okay? Um, because that will reset this beam shift back to whatever its default was beforehand, okay? Unless you overwrite the alignment file for some reason, okay? But we're gonna click done. Okay, so we can see that, you know, the beam shift we still threw off. So we're gonna click beam shift and there we go. So the beam comes right back, okay? Again, now we we were over an area that was transmissive, okay? Um, it, obviously, if we were not over an area that is transmissive, we still wouldn't see anything. So after we click beam shift, the process would be the same. We'd still need to decrease the magnification until we see something, okay? So sometimes, right, you know, if we saw in the beginning, all we had to do is decrease the mag. Um, but, you know, you could also just as a, you know, just for for um, for convenience sake, right, you could click beam shift to begin with, and then you could decrease the mag as well, just so you could rule out the possibility that the beam shift got way out of whack in addition to um, being over something non-transmissive, okay? All right, so one last thing that I want to cover here. Oops, let me decrease the sensitivity of the trackball. All right, so we have on this system a monochrometer, and so that adds an additional wrinkle to things because the monochrometer will shift with time, okay? So I already aligned this earlier today, 
But if it goes several days without use and alignment, you see right now it's it's centered really well. Okay. But if you know, let's say that we've gone like, you know, most of a week without using it. Well, it's entirely possible that this is going to be shifted way off center here. Okay. Um, so if we go again, we can go into, right. We're not seeing anything in SA mode. So let's go into LM mode. Okay. And we're still not seeing anything. Okay. Now the, the, the system, um, Let's actually watch this. Does it change the shifts when you go from LM? Okay, so it doesn't actually change the monochromator shift between um, SA and LM mode, okay? Okay, but we can't see anything, right? And we know in this case it is because of the, so you know, in this case, right, we really can't see anything. We've magged all the way out. You know, we, we did the, we can do it again here just for sand, right? Click beam shift. We're still not seeing anything. Okay, so what do we do? Well, you have this find beam um, command here in the monochromator panel. So we can go ahead and do this. And this is very exhaustive. Um, this will basically go through an automated routine where it um, it shifts the shifts around over like a, I think it's like a square pattern until it you know measures something with this, right? So it's already measuring something here with the screen current. So it's it's already most of the way done now. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's actually going to center the beam to maximize the screen current. You can see what it also did is it it magged like all the way out into LM mode as well. Okay, so it's done, but we're not quite centered. But we can see enough of it here to to work with this. Okay, so if we come here to shift and focus. Okay, we can just adjust this till we see the whole beam. Okay. All right, and there we go. All right, the other thing it did too was it changed the spot size um, as part of the um, the fine beam equation. Okay. So you have to keep that in mind, which is why it you know looks a little weird here. Um this back to four, which is where it was. Okay. So my experience with the monochromator is that you want to do the centering in SA mode, not LM mode. Um, so actually, if we see here, Obviously, we have the focus set at two. Yeah, so this is off here, okay? But this at least gets us to the point where we can see something, okay? And so we've figured out what to do yet again if we you know, don't have a beam, okay? Now, I think the other thing it might do Uh, let's see, let me find the apertures panel. Okay, so I don't know, it, it might also change this to the biggest C2 aperture. Um, it didn't appear to do that in this case. So, or it might've done it and then put it back to the 70, but actually we can take a look here really quick. I think it actually says it here, fine beam. Okay, yeah, retract apertures, change optical settings. So yeah, so I mean, it was, well, obviously it did change optical settings. It, it put the spot size at two. And then I'm not sure if it changed the C2 aperture or not, it may have, but um, if it did, it put it back to the 70, which is what it was at before. So anyways, this is another tool that you can use um, if you have a monochromator is you can use the find beam command, okay? And uh, this does work pretty well. All right. So that's the video on what to do if you can't find the beam. So hopefully this is useful for you. And I'm gonna do another video um, pretty shortly here about uh, a different topic about comma-free alignment. So please uh, stay tuned for that. All right, thanks everyone.